Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be going over how to set up a Unify Security Gateway for the first time in your home network. And I'm also going to be going over a brief just overview of the device itself uh, before we really get into configuring it. So without rambling too much, let's just go ahead and get into it here. So this is the Unify Security Gateway. It has three ports, which if you can, I'm not sure if you can read that on the video, but it's got WAN 1, LAN 1, and then WAN 2 slash LAN 2. So it's configurable as either a single, um, single WAN with two LAN ports or dual WAN configuration with a single LAN port. And there's also a console port for management if you need it, as well as a reset button on the front, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Now it's powered by a power brick. There is no power over ethernet capability, neither in or out. And the power brick obviously comes in the box with it. On the front, you've got uh, port LEDs, which actually mean a few different things depending on what you got plugged into it. So if you see an orange LED on the port, that means it's functioning at 100 megabits per second. And if it's green, it means it's a gigabit. And the console LED will actually be the power indicator once we plug this thing in. Um, if you have a green light on the console, that just means that the device is powered on. Now the top LED right around here where you see the Unify logo, that is an LED similar to the Unify access points if you're familiar with those. Uh, it has a couple different colors, uh, white and blue, and depending on what the color is, is what state the device is in. So if it's flashing white, it's booting up. If it's solid white, it's booted, but it's not adopted. And if it's blue, that is what you want. Normal operation adopted to a controller. And we'll talk about all of those a little bit more once we actually boot the device up. Now, a little uh, background on where this device actually sits in your network. This is really a router at its core. So this device will sit between your modem and your LAN devices. So for all intents and purposes, it's a router with advanced security features. It does not include Wi-Fi. You need a separate access point, such as a Unify access point or whatever else you want for wireless. And you will also need a modem or something from your ISP to get that internet signal. This is not an all-in-one box, and you still need that modem from your ISP to use with this device or whatever modem you're using. Now, if you've seen my videos on setting up an edge router, you know that you have to go through kind of an initial configuration wizard in order to use the device. However, this is a bit different from the edge router in that it'll actually work out of the box with little to no configuration at all. Um, of course, you do want to go through this initial setup process, but my point is that you don't have to. It's not like the edge router where out of the box, it's not really gonna do anything unless you go through the configuration. This one will still function without you really doing much of anything. And to go along with that, that, the reset button what I said in my edge router video holds true you will have to go through this configuration again and readopt it to the controller if you hold that reset button however it's not as big of a deal as an edge routers reset button because you do have the ability to use it um, until you go through the setup again so let's go ahead and get this thing off the ground shall we so the first thing you're gonna want to do obviously is plug it in and we can see that we have a green light on the console port which means that the device has power and we should start to see the LED on the top go through its different phases which right now it's just off because it hasn't really started booting yet but there we go let me turn the light off so you can see it a little better we are flashing white which means that the device is going through the boot process once this is done that light will go solid white all right and there we go we have a solid white light which means that the device is booted however it has not been adopted to a controller yet so let's go ahead and turn the light back on and connect the LAN port to the computer we're going to be using for setup now if you've already got a switch or something else in your network you can just connect it up to that but for this video we're just going to be using a direct connection from our pc to the lan port on the security gateway so we're going to go ahead and plug this into lan 1 for our pc and we're going to connect our internet service which this is the cable from your modem we're going to connect that into wan 1 and we can see that our leds the wan 1 has a green flashing one and the lan 1 has a amber one which means that our LAN port is running at 100 megabits. If you're expecting all gigabit, just look out for that. All right, so now that we're connected, let's go ahead and see if our computer has pulled an IP address. Um, by default, the LAN port on the security gateway does have DHCP enabled on the 192.168.1.1 network. So let's just go ahead and see if we have an IP address. Just open command prompt and type in IP config if you're on Windows. And you can see that we have pulled one. Um, I'm using the first adapter there. So 192.168.1.10 is the IP of my computer and 1.1 is the gateway. Now, if you didn't get an IP here, you can do an IP config slash renew. 
I'll just go ahead and do that here real quick. And I went ahead and grabbed the same address. Now, the first thing to do to set this up is open a web browser and go to 192.168.1.1. The security gateway actually has its own um, interface here that you can browse to without the controller. And this is just to do some very basic setup. So this is not the controller itself, but you can change basic settings such as the WAN connection properties, local network address and DHCP range, and the rest of the configuration, like the security stuff and routing and all that, that'll be done through the controller. But you can see we have a status here at the top it says congratulations gateways connected to the internet if we go into the configuration section this is where you can actually make some changes if your internet connection uses something other than dhcp you can set that here such as ppoe or static um, your dns servers that you want to use can be set here as well and a vlan id if you need that now if you want to change your network addressing you can do that here so 192.168.1.1 is the default you can change that and you can also update the DHCP range if you want to. Now at this point you should have internet connectivity, but you're gonna wanna add this to the controller. So let's go ahead and click the Unify Controller link here. It says, please install the controller to manage your gateway. And that will take you to um, the Unify downloads. And from here, we just scroll down to software and we can see Unify Network Controller for Windows. You can also get it for Mac or Linux, depending on uh, what you are using. Right now we're using Windows, so I'm gonna go ahead and download this one. And we're gonna click download file. And we'll go ahead and launch that installer. So just hit install. And we get an error that says this application requires Java. Click OK to download from java.com. So we're going to go ahead and click OK since we don't have that installed. And agree and start free download. And we're just going to run that file and let Java install. All right, we can go ahead and close out the Java installer. And let's find our Unify controller downloader and rerun that. Go ahead, install. And we're going to leave start Unify controller after installation checked. Go ahead and click finish. And we have the Unify controller booting up here. Now once it's done, we should have a green check mark and we should be able to click that launch browser to manage the network. But I'll just go through, if you haven't used the, the controller before, um, this is now a piece of software running on this PC. This is the software that you will use. You'll access it through a web browser to configure your devices and your devices will be tied to this instance of the controller. So anytime you need to make a change, you need to have this software running on your computer. Now you don't have to keep this running after your device is already set up. You can turn it off. However, there are just a couple features that will require the controller to be running all the time, but for a typical home network, you don't really need to worry about that. We're gonna go ahead and click launch browser to manage the network and go past the security warning. And it takes us to the setup wizard. So name your controller. I'm going to go ahead and name it Toasty's Controller and accept the end user license agreement and click next. Now it's going to ask us to sign in with our Ubiquity account. If you would like to, you can, if you already have one, um, you can click switch to advanced setup and disable both remote access and use your Ubiquity account for local access. This will allow you to create a local account that is not a part of the Ubiquity cloud. Now you can still use your Ubiquity account for local access without having remote access enabled. However, you cannot have remote access enabled and use a local login. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck both of those and I'm just gonna say Toasty is my login name. And you do have to put in an email, but really it doesn't even have to be real. So ASF at asf.asf and we'll go ahead and click next. And by default, it has auto backup enabled as well as automatically optimize my network. For a regular home setup, just leave both of these enabled, especially auto backup. Uh, you can disable this if you wanna really tune vital settings, but just leave it on, it works fine uh, in the automatic mode. And we'll click next. And this is where we can see our devices. So you can see I actually have two devices that are showing up here because I have this switch somewhere in the network. Um, we're gonna ignore that for now. If you don't have a switch, it won't show up. So you should only see the Unify Security Gateway. We're gonna go ahead and check that and click next. That's what we're gonna to add to the controller. And here it's going It's going to take us through Wi-Fi setup. Now, even though the security gateway does not have Wi-Fi built into it, you still have to create a wireless network when you're setting up the controller because really the main bread and butter of the controller software is the wireless capability. So even though we're not using wireless, we still have to make a wireless network name. So I'm gonna to do toasty underscore Wi-Fi. 
and give it a password and I like to combine the two and five gig into one although this is not a video on wireless setup so we're gonna hit next and this is just a review of our configuration uh, you can change your territory and time zone if you need to but this looks good to me so we're gonna go ahead and click finish now at this point our security gateway light has turned blue which means that it is operating and it is adopted to the controller and that's what we want to see and also at this point you're really good to go. I mean, as soon as we plugged it in, we had internet access and everything, but now it's adopted to the controller. And if you just wanna keep all the default settings, this is really as far as you need to go unless you wanna do a little bit of tuning. Now, I will say that you do kinda of wanna enable threat management or the security features, cause why buy a security gateway if you're not gonna use that? but I'm gonna go into that setup in a different video. This is just getting the security gateway off the ground and adopted to the controller. But now I will show you the main menus that you want to be concerned with. And if you've never been in the controller before, then I'll kind of take you through each menu and just tell you what you should and shouldn't worry about. This is just the main dashboard. And it's saying that there's no security gateway detected, so the routing info is unavailable. It's probably just because it hasn't been fully integrated yet. Yeah, there we go. If we refresh the page, you can see we now have a throughput and a latency uh, kind of statistics here. Uh, if we give it a few more minutes, we'll have a little bit more information, such as a percentage of the internet capacity and the gateway utilization. But as far as settings go, if we go down to the settings tab at the bottom of the left menu, well, apparently they have a video in here now, so you can watch that if you want. I'm not going to. And this is the new setup menu. There's two menus that you can use for configuration. The new one, which is still technically beta, I think, and then there's the older settings menu. So if you've used a Unify controller before, you're probably gonna be more comfortable in the older style menu, but you can change between the two, and that's up here. You see, not seeing everything, go to classic settings. And this is the old menu that you're probably more used to if you've used the controller before. Now you can get back to the new menu if you want to by going try new settings, beta. Now I'm gonna go back to the old menu because that's just what I'm used to and I'm more comfortable in here. But I'm gonna show you the main menus that you're gonna wanna be concerned with with the uh, security gateway. And that's gonna be your networks tab, your routing and firewall tab, and your threat management tab. Now there are other settings elsewhere that have to do with um, security gateway features, but these are your main three uh, that you're gonna wanna be concerned with. And I'm just gonna take you quickly through each one. So networks here is where you define um, the networks that you're gonna wanna service on your gateway. So you can see here we have two, LAN and WAN, and we have the configurations for those. So we can edit our LAN if we want to. This is now where we can change the subnet of our LAN if we want to, as well as the DHCP scope. And there's some additional settings here that you can get into if you really want to, but this is all of the configuration for the networks being serviced by the device. And this is also where you will assign VLAN tags if you are creating sub interfaces for um, different VLANs. Now it doesn't show up here because this is our only network we have and we're not gonna assign a VLAN tag to that, but the VLAN option would be right here, um, just under the name area. And I can go ahead and just back out of here and show you in create a new network. So here is right below port, the VLAN identification if you're looking for that. Now in the routing and firewall tab, you have your static routes that you can put in here if you want to as well as your firewall rules, port forwarding, and GOIP filtering, which I will be going into in the security setup video. And then threat management is also the other tab that is pretty security gateway specific. This is really one of the main reasons that you will get um, the security gateway is for this kind of threat management and uh, IDS, IPS capability. But you can see there are a few warnings and caveats that come with this feature. The main thing is that it will affect the maximum throughput. So with all of the threat management features enabled, you will be limited to 85 megabits per second throughput. And it will also disable hardware offloading, which is enabled by default. So if you're familiar with hardware offloading and if you have a very fast internet connection, like over 85 megabits, you might want to think twice about uh, turning all these on because it will affect your maximum throughput. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is just the device tab itself. So if we go here to devices we can see all of our uh, Unify devices in our network and you can see I have three. One of them is pending adoption and the other one is managed by a different controller. So just pretend those two don't exist. The only thing we're concerned about here is our security gateway. If we click on that it'll bring up a tab on the right and this is where we can do some device specific uh, configuration if we want to. 
So in the config tab over here, we can assign it an alias. So I'm just going to say Toasties USG and save that. And it's going to go through provisioning. And once it's done provisioning, it'll be back uh, to a working state. Now, something that it doesn't show here, but it shows on the switch, that is this firmware upgrade button. I do recommend doing this out of the box. Usually the firmware is lagging a little bit behind. So this is one of the first things you want to do really is update the firmware. But for mine, it was already up to date out of the box. So we don't have to worry about that. But if you do upgrade the firmware, just know that it will flash um, white and blue LED on the top. And once it goes back to blue or solid white, then it is finished with the update. Now, a few other things you can manage through here is stuff like SNMP, um, hardware offloading, LLDP features, um, and some of these more advanced things that we're not going to worry about. Usually don't use these unless there's an issue or if we're wanting to do something really custom. Now, at the very bottom under common settings, this just shows those three areas that I've already showed you. The routing and firewall services and networks tab. Actually, we didn't look at services, so we'll go ahead and go there. Um, I'm not really going to go into anything in this uh, services tab here. I think um, really DHCP is the only one that you should be worrying about, but the scope is really all you're going to want to change, which is done under the networks tab anyway. Um, I do see dynamic DNS here, though, which is something that uh, you may want to use, but we'll save these for a different video. So going back to the device specific settings um, you can configure the interfaces this is where you would select what you want that second port to do um, if you want it to be enabled or for WAN or LAN or if you want to disable any of the ports and change their uh, speed settings and you can also see the networks that are assigned to this device which the only one that's showing up is LAN because that's the only kind of custom network that we have here and you can also get the stats if you want to but that's really about it. Um, if you have any questions that I might not have covered, just leave them down in the comments below. Uh, thank you to everybody who has subscribed, and we will be going a little bit deeper into these menus at a later time. Uh, the next video should be the security settings video where I go through how to set up threat management as well as GOIP filtering. And we will also go through uh, firewall rules and port forwarding in a later video as well. As always, I hope you learned something, and happy networking.